Hello and welcome back to EV Motoring. I'm Joe and today I'm going to show you one very important tool that I think you should always bring on your electric car road trip. Let's go take a look. So with the Polestar 2, I store all my charging cables up here in front. Very convenient that way when I have luggage in the back. And uh, first I should also say pardon the disgustingness of this. Just got back from a 3,000 mile road trip. So I normally have my charging cable right here. And then I used to use this adapter here. This is a J1772 and in this end goes a Tesla plug. However, recently I switched over to this one. This is from Lectron. So you see the same J1772 plug here, but in the back, here's the Tesla plug. Now I'm gonna show you why this is very important. Um, a couple of reasons. First of all, sometimes when you're out and about, there might not be a J1772 plug. So you might be uh, running low on juice, you're getting to your hotel, something like that, and the hotel has these Tesla destination chargers pictured right here. And these are great, great chargers. Sometimes a hotel like this Best Western has the Tesla plugs as well as the Clipper Creek plugs. And this is, you know, Clipper Creek is just your standard J1772 plug. So I'll take that out here. And we'll go plug it into the car here in just a minute. And uh, there we go. And see how it charges. However, so obviously the very important scenario would be if there's no J1772 plug and there's only a Tesla plug, you're going to want this adapter so you can charge up your EV overnight. Another scenario is sometimes they'll have a charge point or a blink unit, which costs maybe 30 or 40 cents a kilowatt hour. So you're talking a 20 to 30 or more dollar charge to charge up your vehicle overnight. But with these Tesla destination chargers, they're always complimentary. So that's one thing, you're gonna save money. But two, it's actually the speed of the charge. So I'm gonna go plug in this Clipper Creek unit into the car right now, and let's see what kind of speeds we get. So I'm gonna set this adapter, set the adapter back up front, run over here and grab the plug. It is 19 degrees today, so what a great day to be filming this video. But you know, I was getting back from my trip and I thought, you know what, I should probably show off this product now that I've used it a few times and uh, I'm definitely a believer in what they're doing. All right, Clipper Creek unit plugged in. So it should, there we go, it clicked, charging right now. You see the little green charging light. Let's hop in the car and see what kind of speeds we are getting. Car is at 14%, so you know, definitely need to get charged. Um, just, I'm just approaching home from my road trip and uh, decide, like I said, to swing in here. So, charge ramping up. As you can see right here, most likely this will stop at 30 to 32 amps and 201 volts. All right, it's ramped up right now. We're getting 32 amps. The, car, the reason it says out of 48, the car can accept 48 amps. So this car charges at 11 kilowatts is the peak speed for AC charging. For DC charging, it's 150 kilowatts. That's a whole nother scenario, a whole nother video. But this is just level two AC charging we're talking about today. At, and the uh, car is receiving 201 volts, typical business voltage drawn down a little bit due to probably some long cables getting these chargers out here, and 32 amps. So now you know the vehicle is charging at six kilowatts right now, and that would result in, I need about 60 kilowatt hours to fully charge the vehicle. So about a 10 hour charge. And you know, that's kind of a problem because a lot of times I show up at a hotel, when I, at least when I'm road tripping, I'll show up at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. Well, I wanna be gone by eight in the morning or seven in the morning. So I'm not even gonna be at the hotel for 10 hours. So ideally, if I could get a faster charge, that would be best. So yeah, obviously part one was, it would be free if I used the Tesla plug. This one is also free in this case, but sometimes it's not. But now I'm gonna go plug in the Tesla plug and see what kind of speeds we're getting. So we'll go unplug and uh, hop outside into the frigid 26 degree temperatures and plug in the Tesla charger. So we unlock the charger cable, put this back. Don't worry, I will wrap up the cord in just a second. Just wanna do this really quickly, get this plugged in. All right, so we got our adapter right here. And uh, let me set up the camera here and show you how to do, how to do this. 
All right, so right here we have the Tesla plug, and you know, so and we're trying to transfer it to the J Hone Seven Seven Two. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in, like that, and you hear it click, and you'll see this little knob handle right here will click. Now let's plug it into the car. There it clicks in. Car is yellow on the pole star means the car is thinking, and we should be charging here in just a second. And just like that, the green light on the Tesla is showing. We are charging right now. So let's hop in the car and see what kind of speeds we're getting. So it'll be just a minute as the charge ramps itself up. But yeah, uh, for me, I've used a Tesla adapter on most of my road trips in the past. So I think that it's very useful, useful tool to have. So look at that. Ramping up to, it might get all the way to 48 amps. 45 or at right now so look at the difference in the time to charge the vehicle that is now we're charging at 11 kilowatts instead of six so that means our charge is going to be done in six hours instead of 10 hours that's a huge difference when you're arriving at a hotel late at night you're going to leave the next day with a full battery so another thing i wanted to talk about that i think is very useful with this adapter Believe it or not, some EVs are being sold without a level one or level two charger with the car. Uh, one to highlight is the Kia EV6. Great EV, but if you go to a Kia dealer and buy it, it will not have a level two or, or level one, like any way to charge the car. You get, a, you get a car with no way to charge it. I think this is a big miss by Kia doing that because not everyone has an EV. I get it. I get it's kind of the iPhone way, right? Like, most people already had an iPhone, so now by them taking away the plug, people had their plug from their last iPhone, so that works. Well, electric cars are not that way. Most people buying an electric car, it's their first electric car. And another thing I've encountered is when I'm selling an old electric car to move into my next one, the dealer wants to make sure that the charging plug is with that car. So it's not like I'm getting to keep the charger out of the deal. So um, the cheapest way and one of the best chargers, in my opinion, or at least from a portable perspective, is the Tesla mobile connector. At, at this time of this filming, it is only $230, and you get a level one and a NEMA 1450 level two charger. Granted, it only charges at 32 amps, but for me, overnight at home, that works great, you know, when I'm just at home. Plus, it's great because then it's a charger I can bring with me on my trips. Now, the Polestar comes with the level two charger, so I just bring that. But should I change to another EV, I would definitely get this Tesla charger. And when you put together the price of this Lectron adapter and the Tesla mobile connector, them, those two combined is most likely gonna be cheaper than any respectable level two unit you'll be able to find on Amazon or anything else out there. There are other units out there that are you know, 200, 300, 200 to 300 bucks, go and read the reviews. Look at the warranty. If they're not warranting the product for more than a year, what does that say about the quality of the product? I do not recommend buying you know, these cheaper knockoff level two chargers. And think about what a level two charger is. It's handling all of this electric current to go from your, it most likely in your garage, connected to your house while you're sleeping to deliver the electricity to the car. You know, I, I would want to make sure that I have a safety certified, well-reviewed, high quality product if I'm gonna be you know, plugging into my garage and delivering this kind of current while I'm sleeping. You, know, you wouldn't leave your electric oven on all night long you know, while you're sleeping. So why would you do the same, deliver the same amount of power in your garage without a high quality product as well? So the first thing I wanna get out of the way with this video is this is not an adapter for supercharging. I believe there is one coming soon, at least at the time of filming, this is December of 2022. There should be an adapter coming soon to use Tesla superchargers. However, that does not exist at this time. So um, there's a lot of talk of Elon opening up the supercharger network to all other cars. Most likely that's gonna involve getting an adapter to be able to use the superchargers, and that's fine, but that uh, that is not here right now. This unit right here is rated at 48 amps you know, 220, 240 volts. So it's rated to deliver 11 kilowatts of power. 
that's what you're, that's typically going to cover most electric cars out there, you know, short of, um, the, I think the Hummer EV, I know the long range lightning has like a 19 kilowatt onboard charger. There's a couple EVs that you know, can accept more power, but the vast majority, majority of electric vehicles out there, this is a perfect adapter for doing exactly what I'm doing here, being able to take advantage of the higher power that this Tesla charger delivers. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found this content helpful, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Lots more videos coming with the beautiful brand new Polestar here. I just hit over 10,000 miles on my last road trip. So more road trip videos coming and then a 10,000 mile review. And if you're interested in this product, again, check the links below in the description. It's available on Amazon. I'll have the Amazon link in there, as well as the link directly to Lectron's website if you want to look at some of their other products as well. But yeah, I think it's a great pot product, way more compact than the adapter I was using. Same safety and power you know, um, ratings. So I'm getting all the same benefits out of a much smaller package and a much cheaper price too. So you kind of can't beat it. Can't beat that when every single box is checked. So with that, it's time to end the video. So take care until next time.